Lori Houston's News for the Heart is dedicated to helping you give a voice to your own soul. Our hearts have the power to free us from pain and the struggles that keep us from awakening to our true essence. Join Lori now as we delve into our heart and soul to find the path that will open us to the possibilities and lead us to the life we love to live. And good afternoon. This is News for the Heart. And today I have, well, I have Tom Campbell, who I absolutely adore. And in fact, I adore so much. I am taking part in his his workshop in January. Very excited because I've got all my stuff almost all booked. I'm going to spend my birthday in Paris. I thought that would be nice. <laughs> Great. So taking advantage of your, uh, your workshop to get me over there and to, uh, to play a little. But we are going to talk about the holidays, and we thought we'd talk about finding peace. And part of the piece about finding peace, haha, is, um, is that we tend to don't like ourselves. Like we, we tend to be in a place where we're always wanting to change, fix, heal. You know, we're always looking outside ourselves. We're always trying to do something because we don't like where we're at. We don't like who we are. We don't like things about ourselves. It, it's, it becomes a problem when we have all this family stuff going on. And I mean, this is a magical time of the year because when we can connect in with that spirit of giving and love that is all around us and all around us all the time, um, it can be, a, you know, so different. But the bottom line is, you know, that when we talk about time being an illusion and you said that time is an illusion and I get that from this perspective in this planet and this physical world, you know, time is time and what happened has happened. And now we're moving into, you know, a beautiful time, but to get into that moment, we have to actually like ourselves, like to be able to do the things we want to do or to be the way we want to be. We actually have to want to be in this moment because most of the time we're spending in the past or worrying about the future and it's kind of hard you know we distract ourselves a lot especially around this time of year we've got food and we've got movies and we've got all sorts of things to you know distract ourselves and make us happy but doesn't mean it helps us like each other any any better um and so that's what i wanted to talk about today about finding peace using the magic of the season and uh starting to like who we are like how does that even happen i mean I, you know we've talked about this before about you know a lot of people say you can't love somebody else until you love yourself and you like to say that it's not about loving ourselves it's about liking ourselves and that is a huge difference <laughs> yes so let's talk about that and welcome to the show of course okay. yes <laughs> That is a huge difference, that loving yourself uh, is the definition of narcissism, and we don't want to go there, but uh, liking yourself is absolutely important, and disliking yourself just makes it impossible for you to find peace, for you to find happiness. Uh, you can't find happiness, and you can't really love other people. You can't give if you don't like yourself, if you don't like yourself, then you're convinced you don't have anything to give. You've got nothing valuable or worthy of giving. And therefore, you retreat inside yourself and you get inside your, your little wall that you've built to protect yourself and you close the door and pull up the drawbridge. And that's the way many people spend their holidays is uh, making little forays out into the social scene and then retreating, you know, to their castle and pulling the drawbridge up. It's unfortunate because the holiday season has its own special opportunities. And that is that we learn to, to grow up. We learn to like ourselves, I guess, uh, and be able to love other people through our interaction with other people. That's where our challenge is. And if we get in behind that drawbridge and get in behind our, our protective walls, then our growth is very limited and very slow. It's just, you know, we, we make growing to a better, happier, more positive life almost impossible because we wall ourselves in with our, along with our misery. You know, it's our misery is in there behind that wall with us. That's the problem. So 
the uh, the thing is that people dislike themselves for some for different reasons. Sometimes it's just they feel inadequate. They just feel like they are not a whole lot of anything special. They're just kind of inadequate. And because they feel inadequate, they interpret all the little things that happen to them in a day to be a result of their inadequacy, mm -hmm. even though this is not true. So somebody says something to them, and it might just be a, a comment in passing, but they may take that as a, as a criticism. They hear criticism everywhere. <laughs> Things that aren't meant to be critical are taken critically. If somebody says, oh, you don't have your tree up yet. Well, rather than that just being a fact that somebody says, it's suddenly criticism of you being unable to do the things that you're supposed to do or get things done. So you hear everything that people say as criticism because you believe yourself to be inadequate, you see? So you interpret all of this negativity from others when most of it really isn't negativity at all. It's just life and people interacting and casual conversation. So we make ourselves unhappy. We make ourselves want to retreat into that little castle and pull the drawbridge up because we get all this criticism. And we think if we can just be by ourselves, that will help fix it. The fact is, all that criticism is really created inside of us to begin with. We interpret all of that as negative. And even if somebody actually does insult you says you know says something to you that is maybe rude because that does occasionally happen not a lot most people are not rude most people have good manners but if that does happen then you take it very strongly to be critical of you you take it very strongly that you are inadequate and that's what they're saying and then you respond with anger because you don't want to accept that you are inadequate so you get angry with that person because they have just made you feel inadequate. Now let's look at the possibility that you don't feel inadequate. You really don't feel inadequate and somebody says something rude to you. It doesn't upset you at all. Matter of fact, you realize that it's not about you. It's about them. It's about the speaker. It's not about you at all. It's about the speaker's perception. And instead of getting angry, you can explore that perception a little bit and find out, you know, why, did, how did they come to that conclusion? Why did they come to that conclusion? Because there's no anger in it, because it's not really about you. But you see, when you feel inadequate, everything is about you. You are the center of the, your universe and everything that happens to you and everything that's said to you, you interpret it to be about you. So that is one thing. We just feel that way. And why do we feel inadequate? Oh, a hundred little trivial things that really don't matter. They're all uh, paper tigers. They're, they're not important. Uh, you didn't get a toy you wanted when you were five years old and you uh, thought for sure you were going to get it and you needed it and you deserved it and you didn't get it. <laughs> so you feel that, well, I didn't get it, obviously, because I wasn't worthy. You know, I wasn't seen as being worthy. So thinking that I was worthy was wrong. I'm really not worthy. So you, you know, when you're five or six years old, you have a very small view of reality and you can very easily twist things around to being self-critical and feeling unworthy. And even though uh, none of that is true, again, you take all that on as the fact that you didn't get your toy, you know, is a, is a critical statement about you and about the way people see you as not being worthy. So you start to take that on. So it, the unworthiness comes from hundreds of little things like that. Just little things where somebody said, oh, you didn't put your Christmas tree up yet. You know, and now you feel unworthy because you didn't do it right because everybody else has theirs up and your responsibility was to get one up by Christmas Eve anyway. And there it is, late Christmas Eve and you haven't gotten to it yet. You see, so you feel like you failed. So that's one part all these little things that we that we interpret as being critical whether they are or not leads us to not like ourselves and if you don't like yourself you don't think you have much to give then you can't give much 
you can't give to other people because you really don't feel like there's anything in there to give. So your life is perpetually miserable because you perpetually interpret everything anybody says as being negative. You interpret it all about you when actually 98% of, of it is about them. It's not about you, you see, but you interpret it about you and, and negative. The second reason that we feel bad about ourselves is that we have the idea that what we should do in life is to try to make sure that everything happens the way we want it to happen. Now, that's a self-centered attitude, but it's an attitude that most everybody has. We want things to happen the way we want. And how do we do that? Well, we try to get prepared. We try to talk to other people to convince them that, you know, what we want is really the better way. Uh, we manipulate, uh, you know, we connive, we do all sorts of things. We very selectively give people information and withhold other information because we're trying to uh, manipulate their opinion, their opinion of us or their opinion of, you know, what we should do next, trying to get them to do what it is we would like them to do. And we do that with everybody. We do it with our spouse. We do it with our children. We do it with the next door neighbor. We do it with everybody at work. Everyone say at work, you want to be seen as competent and one who you know, gets a good job done and gets it done fast. So that's an attitude. And you will only say those things that help forward that attitude. You see, so uh, you're trying to manipulate people to, to have that attitude. So maybe you don't ask for help when you need it because that would be an admission that you didn't know something. So you get along without asking for help or you get along, you know, you go home and work at home and, uh, or, or stay at work and work until six, seven, eight o'clock at night because that's what's required for you to maintain this image rather than going and getting help, you see, and saying, you know, I really don't understand that. Is there anybody can help me out with this? See, that would uh, not be a good thing. So this, this attitude pervades everything. You want to manipulate other people's attitudes, ideas, opinions, and actions to be the way you know is best. Best for them, best for you, best for the whole world, because you know what's best for the whole world and everybody else. You've, um, you've been given that, that uh, fantastic uh, knowledge of what is the best thing to do, because everybody feels that what their attitudes and what they think is indeed the right way. You know, there's that old saying that says there's, you know, there's, there's two ways to do things, my way and the wrong way. You know, well, that's a joke, but most people actually feel like that. And it gets down to it. They really feel that way. And how that makes us feel bad is that we constantly fail. We cannot manipulate everybody to see life and situations the way we see them. We can't manipulate our kids to come home and do their homework and study hard and, you know, do these kinds of things when they'd rather come home and watch TV or goof off or play with their friends. And we'd like for them to do that because we know that's part of their process for making good grades, getting into a good school, getting a good career. And we want all of that for them. So we start pressuring them and manipulating them and threatening them and doing everything else we can to force them to act and be the way we want them to be. But we mostly fail because people don't like to be manipulated. And when they feel they're being manipulated, they push back. So pretty soon your child would do anything other than homework because homework is what he's been told he must do. And the only way he can maintain his own self-respect is to push back from being pushed. Otherwise, you see yourself as just somebody gets pushed around. So you push back. So here we have, you can imagine this. Here we have all seven and a half billion of us, and we're all trying to manipulate each other to be the way we know is right. And we all feel manipulated, so we're all pushing back against all the other people who are trying to manipulate us, and we're trying to manipulate them, and they're pushing back on us. So you see how dysfunctional that sounds. I mean, it just doesn't sound like it's going to go anywhere good anytime soon. So the, your experience is that you fail. Your kids aren't doing what you want. All right, now you're a failed parent because, you know, they, they refuse to do their homework or they refuse to 
take the academic curriculum. Instead, they're taking the farmer's curriculum or something else. And um, so now you're a failed parent, you know, and your spouse doesn't do what you want. You know, they throw their clothes around on the floor and then you have to pick them up and that's not what you want. And you're, you know, your mother and your mother-in-law and your sisters, they're not doing what you want either. And the people at work are not doing what you want. They don't recognize your brilliance and they don't uh, see things the way you see them. And they don't want to take the opportunity that you see that they should and on and on and on and on, you see. So we start feeling failed because we can't manipulate the world to be the way we want it. Well, the problem with that is that trying to manipulate the world to be the way you want it is just your fear and ego talking. You know, it's your arrogance talking that you know the best way for people to be. So if you instead just accept things and people the way they are and then deal with them in a way that is the most positive way that you can deal with it, the most loving, the most caring, the most positive, the, the lowest entropy approach you can think of to dealing with that, now you will let go of a lot of that misery, a lot of that failure will just disappear because rather than you trying to structure your reality, you're letting reality be and you're just interacting with it. And when you stop pushing people, they stop pushing back. <laughs> now it's possible for your kid to do its homework because you're not telling it that it has to. Right. You see, it may even decide that homework would be a good thing because it really would like to go to a good school and have a good career too, you see. But uh, it just can't do it if you keep nagging. So if you stop nagging, it's more likely to happen. And what you find out is if you stop trying to control everything, Everything just works out marvelously. The fear is that if you stop trying to control everything, everything will go to hell in a handbasket immediately and self-destruct and it'll be horrible. The only thing that holds your life and, and all the people around you together and makes it work is your vision of how it has to be and your manipulation to make it be that way. Mm -hmm. And if you quit manipulating people, Oh, well, you know, if I just am who I am, if I'm just authentic and I say, gee, folks here in the office, I just don't know anything about that. Could this is somebody knows more about this can help me out and uh, let that be known that uh, you don't know everything. Admit that. Then, you know, people will actually see that you're more real. They will like you better. They will come around and try to be helpful to you rather than they know you, you know, they know you're struggling. And they're just not going to say anything at all. They're just going to let you struggle and stew in your own juice because you won't admit that you're struggling. And they know that. You don't know that they know that. But, you know, we know all these things about everybody else, right? We know what they're thinking. We know the games they're playing. We know how they're trying to manipulate us because that's why we push back. But somehow we think that nobody really knows how we're trying to manipulate them. <laughs> and and give them our image you know nobody figures that out right because we're so good at it <laughs> Yet we see everybody else and we know what they're doing but they of course don't know what we're doing you see that's not true either so when you're just authentic when you stop trying to, to make life the way you want it and just take it as it is when you stop trying to make people be the way you want them to be and just take them as they are and when I say take them as it is and as they are, I mean in a very positive way. Accept that. Deal with it. Now, maybe dealing with it would be, you know, having to talk with them. Hey, I don't like picking up your dirty clothes. Or, you know, homework. If you don't do your homework, you're not going to do well. If you don't do well, eventually that's going to come back and bite you. But it's your life. Just want to point out some things. See, now you're giving guidance, not instructions. There's all the difference in the world between guidance and instructions. Guidance is not judgmental. It's not pushy. It's not I know and you don't. That's what makes people push back. Guidance is helpful. You're not telling anybody what to do. You're just giving them information and then letting them make the choice. You see, you're not trying to make the choice for them or trying to push them into making a particular choice. So. That's where a lot of this holiday misery <laughs> comes from. 
is that we are in our own little castle. It's all about us, us and our mystery. We're in the, our misery. We're in there behind the wall. And we know that when we go to that dinner with all those relatives that it's just, you know, those people are ridiculous and they just won't do anything I tell them. And, you know, they don't, they won't listen to me and so on. And they have their own dysfunctional ways and I don't want to be a part of that. So we get into that. All that is, is judging. It's judging other people. Let them be however they are. It's okay. You can still interact with them. You can still have a laugh with them. You can still smile and talk about the things that you can talk about. And if it goes to places that you can't talk about it, well, then you move along and go talk to somebody else, you see. But that's the challenge. It's easy to sit in your little castle with the drawbridge up. There's no challenge there. There's no stress there. That's why you do it. Well, there is stress there because you're stressed and you're very stressed that you're so inadequate you can't even get out and meet people that you feel better hiding in your little hidey hole, you know, in the in your castle behind your behind your wall with the moat, you know, around it and the drawbridge up. You feel yeah, more secure is. there. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the sad thing because you are full of stress. You are full of dissatisfaction. You are full of dislike for yourself. And the way to get rid of that isn't by pretending it doesn't exist. The way you get rid of that is by changing who you are and how you see things. Not by making the world conform to your sense of how it ought to be, but by changing yourself to just accept things and deal with them positively, interact with them. Sure, give people your opinion, but in guidance. Not in, here's what you should do, and here's why you should do it. Here's why I'm right, and here's why you're wrong. That's not helpful to people. That's not what they can use. They can use guidance, or just information, or just chatting for fun, just to see what each other are doing. But you have to interact with people. That's where the challenge is. So you, this is a season when being sociable is almost thrust to thrust upon you. It's demanded of you. It's part of this holiday season, being sociable. But grab that as an opportunity of being social. And okay, when you are around those friends or those relatives or whatever that you just really don't like that much, take that as a challenge. Hmm. How are you going to smile? How are you going to interact with them and be positive? And if they say something that you know is wrong, instead of correcting them and telling them they're wrong and stupid, you can just let that go because it's okay that they have their own opinions. You see, they don't have to agree with you and you don't have to argue with them. You can just let them tell their opinion and you can nod your head and change the subject if you like or whatever. Just interact with them. Make it positive. That's your challenge. Connect with people make it a positive connection. If they insult you, don't be insulted. Don't take it on. Don't interpret it that way. Right. Just realize it's about them, not you. And then instead of anger, you end up with compassion. It's about them. They're unhappy. They're miserable. They're in their own little castle with all their misery. And they're trying to, you know, get back, get even, uh, you know, have everybody see them as the wonderful yes. person that they are. And it's not working, so they're getting angry about it. So you have compassion for them instead of anger for them. And you don't want to say things that push their buttons. You avoid things that push their buttons. And you don't have any buttons anymore because <laughs> you, you don't, uh, you know, you've given up that, that fear, that, self, that sense of self inadequacy. That's where all your buttons are. People pushing your nose in something you know is true deep down, but you don't want to admit, and therefore you deny, and the way you deny is fight back, push back, get angry. So use these holiday seasons as, the, as a great set of opportunities to be around people and make it positive. Say all the things that other people are interested in. You don't need to talk about what you're interested in. Talk about what they're interested in you'll find they'll be very engaged with you if you talk about what they're interested in rather than knowing that what they should do is listen to, to you as you tell them what you're interested in, you see? So make it about other and not about self. 
and see how long you can last you know, <laughs> at all of these parties and social events and family gatherings and just see how well you can do to get through all of it positively. And I will predict that if you do that, even if you're just doing it from your intellect, even if you're just trying to do it, you haven't really changed yourself, but even if it's through your intellect, by the time you get at the end of it, you won't have that depressed, unhappy feeling that makes you want to go get in your, get in your castle and, you know, pull the, you know, pull the drawbridge up. <laughs> you won't have that. You'll feel like, hey, you know, that wasn't so bad. Okay. Yeah. Those people are all messed up, but it really wasn't so bad. It was kind of nice seeing, you know, uncle Fred and aunt Susie that I hadn't seen for three or four years and all of that it was nice kind of catching up with things and you'll start to find the good parts about it and you'll stop dwelling on the bad parts about it and the whole character of it will change. And then by the time we get to the holiday season the next year, you, you will be more uh, positive about going out and interacting. So finally though, it has to get out of your intellect and down into who you are. You have to give up being dissatisfied with yourself. You have to give up being inadequate, feeling inadequate, because the fact is you're not inadequate at all. You just believe you are. It's a belief. If you act inadequate, that's, that's the belief creating, you're doing that. It's your reaction to your feeling inadequate is what makes you act in ways that people see as inadequate. We, we are the ones that make choices and we tend to push ourselves to be somebody other than who we are. Mm -hmm. We need to be authentic. Just be who you are. Let other people be who they are. See, the problem is when people says, all right, I'm just who I am. And I know i am got it right and I understand everything. So everybody else needs to be the way I am. Because again, you're either the way I am or you're wrong. You're not doing it right. You see, that's a problem. Just be who you are and let everybody else be who they are. That's the, that's the key. And if you can do that, you're going to enjoy this holiday season. It's going to be fun. You're going to meet a lot of people and you will realize that most people out there are just struggling like you are trying to get along the best way they know how. And then comes the empathy <laughs> for them because yeah, they're, they do the same thing. They feel the same way. So take get a new attitude toward this holiday season and go have fun with it. Enjoy it. Meet those people that, you don't like, but in this time, meet them rather than judging them all the time that you're meeting them and, and pointing out in your own mind, all the ways that they are, you know, not right and inferior and screwed up. Let all that go. That's all negative junk. Just let them be who they are and interact with them on that basis in a positive way. Don't push any of their buttons. Talk about things they want to talk about. You see, that's giving and you can only give if you feel that you are somebody that has something to give right. you see it all comes back together when you feel miserable about yourself you don't have anything to give it's all about you mm. you can't give anything you can only take because you want you're dissatisfied you're not um you're not fulfilled things aren't the way you want them you see that's the problem. So you need, you want, that's your ego. That's your fear. When you get over that ego and fear, then it's easy to let everybody be who they are. You don't have all of those needs and wants and things that you, you know, people, you don't judge people. You let them be judging them as useless. Mm. It's not, it's not helpful to be, you know, talking about people and saying why they're negative and why they're wrong and why they shouldn't be the way they are. That is just you not being the way you should be. <laughs> we only judge people because we, they're our own judgments, right? Yes. All yes. the things that are wrong is because we aren't doing them right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's where everything comes from, right? That's right. That's it. You, uh, you see a world that reflects yourself. And that's because you make choices, you interpret that world in terms of your own sense of 
self, your own, you know, you think when somebody says something, what the way you understand what they mean is by saying, if I were in their position and I said that, what would I feel? What would I mean? That's how you interpret it, you see? But they're not you, they're somebody else. And when they say that, they may not mean at all what you would mean if you said it, but yet you jump to that conclusion and then you take it negatively or you get upset by it or something when it really wasn't anything at all that was, that was negative. You just interpret it that way. So yes, indeed, we see everybody else as a reflection of ourselves. So as we lighten up and get happy and, and uh, you know, let people be, then suddenly everybody else is so much nicer. You know, it seems like everybody else grows up when we do. That's uh, because we stop seeing everything in a negative light. We try to make ourselves feel better by putting other people down. Well, look at those people. See what they're doing. You know, they're just so petty and they're foolish. And, they, 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 and we go on and on. What we're trying to do is say, I'm better than that. I'm better than they are. I'm not that, I'm not that bad. I'm not that worse off. You know, I don't do those things. At least I do. Da, 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 da. So we're trying to make ourselves feel better by putting other people down. And if we didn't feel bad to begin with, we wouldn't need to do that. You see, we wouldn't have to do that. We already feel good about ourselves. So yes, you have to like yourself. It's very key. If you don't like yourself, nothing else will work. And if you really don't like yourself, then start thinking about being authentic. Who are you? Who are you really? Throw away all this image and all the stuff that you want to be and everything you think that you have to be for other people and what they're expecting you to be and just be yourself. That's step one. But now step two is just as important. Look at how that works. You're being yourself. You're being authentic. How does that work? Does it make everybody angry? You know, does it, you know, does it create uh, a lot of uh, anxiety? Is it, is it a problem in your life? Well, if it is, then you need to change yourself. You don't need to change them to suit you. You need to change you to suit the world. You see? So then you change yourself. And now be authentic. Be the new authentic self. The one who doesn't have so much fear and is not so judgmental and see how that plays in the world. And you'll find it plays a lot better. And keep on experimenting until you eventually grow up. You know, you don't grow up in a season or, or in a month or whatever, even in a year, or even in a decade. It's a life's work. You grow up in a lifetime. So it doesn't matter where you are. It's not like, oh yeah, well here I am, I'm a mess. There's no way for me to get from here to where you're talking about. Of course there is, you know, right? The, you know, the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Of course there is. You just have to make a little effort to be authentic and to observe how that works and change yourself until the authentic you is a happy, interactive, positive being. And at that point, you'll find your life is mostly joy rather than struggle. It's mostly happy. And even the things that are tough, you meet them and handle them well. You don't get angry and upset and drop into self-pity and go through all of that stuff because you let all that go. You let all that fear and, and self-centeredness go. So that's, that's my take on the holidays. It's a wonderful time to get out there and experiment with a new, more positive view. <laughs> See how many people you can make smile even the ones you dislike the most. See if you can't say something that makes them smile. And don't say anything that makes anybody upset or frown. Just see if you can do that. Even if you're just making it up from the head and it's not what you really mean, it's not how you really feel, but just see if you can do it. Because even just doing it through the intellect, you will see the result. It'll have be so much more fun <laughs> and it will be so much more interesting you know, social event, and you'll like it better. And then you can actually try to be it rather than just act it, because that's essential. If you continually act, it'll actually make things worse, because then you'll get resentful, you know, because you're acting, because people don't want to act. 
they don't like acting. And when they have to act, they get resentful. If you have to act at work, you get resentful for that. After 20 years of that, you can't stand it anymore. And you need to, you need to leave someplace where you can be yourself. So, well, I didn't give you much chance to talk, so <laughs> I'd better be quiet here and, uh, and let my host get a, a thin word in edgewise. Well, I did do a lot of talking at the beginning, but I, I mean, okay. So the big thing that we do is try and be authentic and look at those areas that we tend to judge others the most, because that would be a good indication of what we judge about ourselves. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, what's the best way to do some of these things? Like what's obviously when we come at it from a place of doing, or we come at it from just trying, I mean, again, it comes from the place of the intellect or the heart. So we, I guess for me, it would be, you know, constantly checking in with myself and saying, okay, where am I right now? <laughs> how am I feeling? What's my body? You know, because then you can kind of get into the present moment and you're not stuck in the past. You're not worrying about the future. So you're kind of like doing a check-in with yourself. And then, you know, usually that's when I laugh and <laughs> say, oh, right. So this is what I'm doing. <laughs> Cause yeah, that's not working very well. Um, but other than that, I mean, what are, what are the key things that you would do? Like what, like, is it meditation? Like to me, it's just like doing a quick connect in with myself to see where I am. And then I can laugh because, you know, when you're in the moment and you're not in the moment, but you're like stuck in this thing that's happening. The last thing you feel about is laughing until you can sort of step outside of it and go, well, right. Okay. So you're doing that again. <laughs> right. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's an interesting process. What is your, I mean, for people that do get stuck a lot, what's your, I mean, you've, you've given us already some good yeah. ideas. But. I, I think the thing that I would say that I would, um, suggestions I might have is pay attention to your feelings. Right. How do you feel? Yes. And that's these moments of, of introspection where you have to kind of see your si yourself from outside of yourself. You know, and be aware of your feelings. Be aware that you're feeling stressed. Be aware that you're feeling anxious. Be aware that you're feeling negative. And then say, why? What am I, you know, what am I doing here? Well, if you're feeling negative, it's a good bet you're judging somebody else that, you know, is not being the way they should be, you know, that sort of thing. And you'll find that whenever your feelings are negative, there's a problem. Because if we didn't have the problem, if we didn't have the fear, the ego, and the beliefs, we wouldn't have any negative feelings. Right. We wouldn't have negative emotions. We'd be full of, of compassion, empathy, caring. And if we did just run into that case where the person was just so awful that there was no way that you could interact with them, we'd go someplace else. You know, it would be time to go elsewhere. Just let them be. That's who they are. Then if you can't interact with them, then don't interact with them. If that happens to be your spouse. Now that's a problem. <laughs> or, you know, somebody, you know, you're, you know, somebody that you have to interact with or somebody at work. That's a problem. Well, then you have to look and say, well, how can I best work with this problem? I can't not interact with them. How can I interact with them and cause the minimum of negative feelings, the minimum of dysfunction, the minimum, minimum of, of anger. How can I do that? And then start working at that. So here I'm saying the intellect leads, okay. but the, the being level has to follow. You have to be these things. Otherwise you're just a, a more clever manipulator. <laughs> if you just always do it in your intellect, this makes you a more clever manipulator. You have to be it, but often before you can be it, you have to think it and you have to use your intellect to start it. But number rule number one, keep track of your emotions. 
Now, mostly we don't keep track of them. You know, here we are in a rage getting upset with somebody and we don't even realize we're in a rage because we're so much committed into the rage that we don't see ourselves from the outside. That's anybody else looking at us would say, wow, that person's really angry. You know, they're in a rage there. They're really upset, but we don't see it. Everybody else notices it instantly, but be aware of that. Be aware of when your feelings start to turn negative, where you start to feel, no, that's not right. Well, it's not right to you, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you are, you know, the judge of the universe and that's not right. It's just another opinion. It's another way of somebody doing something and work with it in a positive way. So feel those feelings, be aware of them. How do you feel? And when you start feeling a little negative, usually you feel a little negative before you feel a lot negative. When you start feeling a little negative, then's the time to start looking at yourself and saying, why? Why am I negative? And you'll almost always find ego is the reason. They're not doing it the way I want, the way they should, the way I know that they should. That's not a good way to do it. They shouldn't treat their child like that. They shouldn't do this. They shouldn't do that. They shouldn't let their child, you know, make all that noise in the restaurant, you know, and you, you've got all of these things about how you know what they should be doing. And as soon as you realize that, just tell yourself, stop it, <laughs> cut it out. This is life. People are how they are. They make their own choices. And we try to deal with those choices in the most positive way possible. Because as we start getting negative, that negativeness builds. All right, we have, we're in a restaurant and there's a baby crying or a couple of children squabbling at a table and you start feeling annoyed with them. Well, that little annoyance gets worse and worse and worse to where you're so focused on all the annoying things they're doing, you don't even see anything else. Yeah. You're not even aware of your food. You're not aware of talking with anybody else. You're just totally consumed with this annoying thing going on and why those parents leave those children doing that. What is wrong with them? They need to take those kids outside or you know, whatever. And pretty soon your, your negativity has consumed you. And that's the only thing going on in your life right now is that annoyance. And then you walk out and, you know, they ruined my entire meal, you know. Well, they didn't. You ruined your entire meal because you focused on what was annoying to you. They didn't ruin it. You ruined it. You could have just said, well, sometimes it's like that. You know, sometimes you go to a restaurant and it's just something like that happens. It's life. How am I going to make the best out of this? Well, you just focus a little more tightly on the conversation that you're having. You know, you, you get into other things and let that drop off in the background. You may have to talk a little louder to get over the noise, but that's okay. You continue on. You focus on your food and, what, you know, how good it is or how nicely it was done or whatever. You look around for the positive things and you focus on those and let the negative stuff fall off into the margins, be in the background. That's how you deal with that positively, you see? So it's not that somebody else makes you miserable, you make yourself miserable. And you can be aware of that when you get aware of your feelings. Am I feeling anything negative? And negative means not positive, not full of joy. It's not a happy thought. Am I thinking, how annoying, that's upsetting. Those people aren't doing it right. All that's negative. All the complaining is negative. If you're a complainer and you're complaining about things, oh, look over there at those people, see what they're doing? You see, that sort of thing. It's all negative. And as you catch yourself doing negative things like that, where you're judging, putting others down, looking at all the horrible things that are in your environment and how much they annoy you and how awful people are that they let those happen and on and on and on, all you're doing is making yourself miserable. You say, here's something miserable in my life. Well, let me really focus on that and be as miserable as I can possibly be. Maybe I can even get it to the point I'm so miserable it'll ruin my whole evening. Yeah. And, and I'd rather just go home and go into that castle and put up the drawbridge. <laughs> right. I'm just going to get in where it's nice and secure and we don't have idiots to deal with and I'll just be there. But see, you're not there. You're sitting in your castle with the drawbridge up, steaming, revisiting it. So not only do you focus on it while it's happening, you take it with you back to the castle. And for the next five days, everybody you meet, you tell them about it. 
you won't believe what happened to me last night when I went to this expensive restaurant. You, know, you tell everybody about it. You repeat it. You, you carry it around, you know, like a cross you're dragging, right? It's just, you make this an important part of your life. Negativity. Yeah. You see? And then that's your life. So then you find out that your whole life's like that. You complain constantly about people aren't doing it the way you know they should. Mm -hmm. And your life becomes a series of complaints and unhappy things. You start feeling sorry for yourself that you have to live in all this awful place with these awful people and that everybody's rude and nobody appreciates you. And that then leads you to depression and pretty self pretty soon. You don't want to go out of your castle anymore because you're depressed. And no, I'll just stay here, keep my walls up, my drawbridge up, and that's just going to sit here. And that's the only thing I can do because everything else is more painful. Well, that's your own negativity that focuses on the bad things, focuses on the stuff you don't like, and then repeats it and repeats it and tell everybody and bring it up and think about it at night when you should be sleeping. And you just, it's like you've, you've put your arms around it and you embrace the negativity and can't let it go. Well, pretty soon there's no room for anything positive. You're so full of negativity that the positive stuff can't even slip in there. Besides that positive stuff, it probably wouldn't last anyway. And it's too good to be true. So it's not really positive. Watch if I did, you know, if I started that relationship, it's just going to turn out like all the rest. So you're even negative about what's positive. <laughs> See? You can find fault in positiveness. So at that point, then you're kind of lost. How are you going to turn that around? How are you ever be happy? You can't. You'll just be miserable and unhappy until you change yourself. You create that negative thing. So big thing, number one, be aware of your emotions. If any emotion is stressful, anger, displeasure, you know, judging, all those things, everything that isn't joyful, if it's not happy and joyful, then it's a problem. So when, as soon as you feel those things, how am I going to make my kids do their homework? How am I going to make my kids eat their vegetables? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? How am I going to trick them, force them, cajole them into doing what I want them to do? Well, if you have that attitude, you'll just make it harder. I mean, maybe you can threaten them. You know, maybe there's something that uh, you can with take, you know, you'll stay in your room until, you know, this or that. Maybe there's ways you can do that. But in the long run, that'll turn out badly. Mm -hmm. That will ruin the relationship. That'll make it difficult for them. Now you're giving them sense that they have failed and that they're not good enough. And then they'll grow up and be negative and be complainers too, you see, because you are with them. So it, yes, it may solve the problem. You may get your way in the short term, but you're going to lose, and so are all the people around you are going to lose in the long term. And just the opposite happens. When you're positive and you're caring and it's about other, everybody wins. Not only do you win and you're happy, but everybody else is a little happier and a little more positive too. So it works both, both ways. So those feelings, when you feel down, when you feel unhappy, when you feel, oh, it's not worth it, you know, Got to get dressed up. You know, it's cold outside. It might rain later and I'm going to have to go and talk to a bunch of people I really don't want to talk to. Uh, you know, <laughs> when, you, when you've got that feeling, well, that's you making yourself unhappy. That's you making yourself sad and wanting to stay in, and hide in your castle. That's not good. That's not where you want to be. You want to be positive about things. So yes, catch that emotion before it, before it turns black. Catch it when it's just light gray. <laughs> you know? Oh, I'm annoyed. There's a kid over there banging his water glass with his fork, and that is just shouldn't happen in this expensive restaurant. <laughs> then you start faulting the parents after you fault the kid, and then pretty soon you're in an internal rage that ruins your whole evening. Mm -hmm. Well, instead you have to accept it. Life is like that. You don't always have it the way you want it. Sometimes you go to expect an expensive restaurant on a date with your significant other and you want it to be romantic and some kids making noise. That happens. You know, it's just the way it is. Kids are like that. They don't have big pictures. 
they're very self-focused too, just like you are, you know, and they haven't learned about manners and about uh, pretending that they have to, uh, you know, be nice to other people. They haven't learned any of that yet. So that's the way it is. And uh, you have to, how can I make this positive? What can I do to minimize that problem? I can't make the problem go away, but what can I do to minimize it? That's your thing. How can I make it as positive as possible? You know, we have so much in our lives that we just don't have any control over. And that's the thing that we sort of have to accept. Yeah. We just, you know, I, I always find it ironic when people get upset with people on cell phones and maybe in the beginning, people used to talk a little bit louder on cell phones, but what's the difference between someone having a one-way conversation with someone other than, you know, two people having a two-way conversation. I mean, it's like, they're still talking. I mean, it's, it's, you know, but yet somebody thinks that's rude. And it's, it's just interesting because we have our own, I don't know, we have our own opinions. Somebody said, well, you know, talking on the phone when there's something going on, it's just rude. It's like, but when we pick up these little things that we seem to just like nag us and nag us and nag us. And it's so silly when you look at it from a different perspective. I mean, it's just. Right. right. Well, we think that when somebody is talking on a cell phone and they are there, they should be interacting with us. I mean, that's why they're there. We all, you know, we all went to dinner to yeah, talk to each other. It's a stranger that we're getting mad at be, that's on the other table that's talking on and having a conversation, <laughs> right? It's like, or, you know, you're on yeah. a bus and someone's, talking on their cell phone it's like yeah okay so maybe on the bus you're not always with friends but still it's 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 interesting like it's, it's interesting the things that really tick us off and if we yeah. look at them logically i mean they don't make any sense right, right? no they don't make any sense at all, at all. The, the, the rule are when you get on the bus or get on the subway everybody stays nobody says anything right i guess everybody needs to be silent <laughs> but that's silly it is. Right? It's life. You know, there's life going on there. You know, people need to be people and you need to not be so set in your ways that you cannot allow people to be who they are. You know, otherwise we live in this very conformist society and there's are all these rules and everybody acts like this. And then everybody has to wear the same color shirt and, you know, have the hair the same length and, uh, <laughs> you know, girls, girls can't wear pants and they can't cut their hair and guys have to wear, you know, suits. And, you know, we can get back to that conformist reality where there are all these rules that, that uh, told us how we had to interact and how we had to be. Well, that is, uh, that's, sometimes that's civilizing because the rules maybe make it easier for everyone to do their own thing in their own mind, but it's not necessary. Right. There's value in diversity. There's value in people just being people. There's valuable in you being able to engage life and the world as it is, rather than needing it to be the way you want it. You know, let it be the way it is and do that with, with joy. You know, okay, somebody's talking on a cell phone at the next table. Well, if they're shouting, then maybe that's a problem. <laughs> but I don't think that's the case. No. I think we tend to be we, we tend to be oh. eavesdropping is the case. <laughs> and we can't hear the whole conversation. Right. Only hearing one part. Right. And it annoys us, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're eavesdropping and we're saying, Oh, listen to that. They're talking about such and such a thing, and then we get annoyed because we don't get the other yeah. part of the conversation. So that's it. the whole thing needs to be quiet and go away because <laughs> We can't participate in it, even if we're participating silently. <laughs> yeah, it's something outside of our ability to participate in, but it's in our space. So <laughs> yes, that's probably why it annoys us. It's because we, we, we can't hear both sides. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So getting back <laughs> to the, you know, the magic of the season, it's all about giving. It's all about caring. It's not about, you know, the most expensive gift or, um, you know, it might be about being more thoughtful, but it, like this energy that's here, that's available. I mean, it's available all the time, but something about this time of the year makes it just, I don't know, I guess it's nostalgic or it's, 
you know, us thinking back to a time when we really believed in magic and we sort of lost that, that magical uh, belief that, that things can just. Well, I, I think it's magical because we get pushed out of our castle. Right. <laughs> we get pushed, you know, they say, put the drawbridge down and, you know, and come join us. You get pushed out and that being pushed out means you're pushed out to care. You're pushed out to be thoughtful. You're giving gifts or whatever, and you have to consider these people and what they might want or like or what you could do or other kinds of things. So it takes us out of our preoccupation with us. You know, I'm in my castle and it's all about me. And it pulls us out of the self-centered state that we often live in and makes us think about other people, makes us interact with those other people socially, makes us reach out, connect. That's what it's all about. It's connection. And for those who are just kind of sad sacks, that's a tough, that's a tough thing, you know, because if they're just sad and they're in their castle and they want to be left alone, then they find it annoying to be constantly drug out to be at social events that they really don't want to attend. <clears throat> so that's the, that's the, I think the magic of these holidays is that it's, it's a connection time. <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me it's a social time and we need that <clears throat> well we've talked to the we cough have, started we have I, I think we've done a good i think we've done a good show for the holiday season i think there's a lot of tidbits in there that uh that can really be helpful to people and Sorry, you're getting a uh, dry cough or whatever is going on there. <laughs> it will go away soon. Yeah, it just, of course. Just... As soon as we're done. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, right. as always, you are so fun to have on the show. I know we talk a lot about the same things, but it's always sort of a little bit of a twist in, in helping us, you know, really get to a place where we can finally grow up and you know, work towards liking ourselves and finding that peace that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. I mean, it all has to start with from, from within. Right. So, and as we like ourselves, that has to happen first. After that, we actually get to like other people. <laughs> right. <laughs> After we like ourselves, until we like ourselves, it's kind of hard to like other people because we're just miserable and unhappy. Yeah. Uh, well, if you want more information about better. Tom, go to mybigtoe.com. Um, he has hundreds, literally, of videos that you can watch and get more. Of... Overwhelming is the word. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> Lots of great places to start, though. Um, and I always love having you on because it's always, you know, the practical application. And that's kind of what we need. Mm -hmm. as we kind of try and grow up in this planet. So I, you know, I'm always grateful to have you on. Well, you know, uh, Lori, I'm always happy to be here because this, um, this practical stuff that we talk about is really what's important. It is. It, everything else really boils down to this. It, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is the important stuff. And though we, say the similar things because it's really a simple problem. You know, it's about love and fear. Mm -hmm. And that's really the whole problem. So in two words, you can have the whole discussion almost. It's about getting rid of fear and becoming love. But that has a lot of interesting um, logical consequences in a lot of situations. And every time we approach it differently and talk about different situations and different things. So I think it's a this is probably the most important discussion that you can have mm -hmm. is that a discussion about how to become happy, yeah. how to find peace, how to find love. You can't do it until one, you like yourself and you interact with others. It requires a social situation. You don't find love sitting in a cave. <laughs> you may think you do, but you don't find that. You find that through interaction. You don't find that sitting in your castle with the drawbridge up. You only find the good stuff when you get out and can mix non-judgmentally with other people. See the good in them. 
See what find something in there that is positive that you can work with and ignore all the stuff that you can't work with. And eventually when you get rid of all your own trouble, there won't be any part that you can't work with. You can work with all of it with everybody. So it's a it's a thing worth doing for any of our listeners out there if they if they're not full of joy and peace and happiness and satisfaction, you know, in their life. If that isn't a description of them in their daily life, then they could achieve that if they change themselves. And I'll leave it on a happy note. The good news is that if you really want to change and grow up and get rid of your fear, that's all it takes. If you really want to, not at the intellectual level, but at the being level, you really, really want to get rid of the negativity, you will, because your intent modifies future probability. And with a being level, a strong being level intent, that will just happen. So that's all you have to do, really, is really want to, to see the problem as yourself and want to outgrow it. If that is a deep feeling you have, a deep knowing you have that you want to do this, it will happen. It will just happen all by itself. So that's the good news. There's really nothing you have to go do in particular other than just really want to grow up. That is the only thing you have to do. Everything else will take care of itself. Nice. Well, thank you, Tom. You have been listening to News for the Heart. We've been getting to the heart of what matters with Tom Campbell. And uh, I guess we'll have one more show. It probably won't air till near the beginning of January, the end of December, but uh, we'll be back next month. Thanks, Tom. Have a question for Lori and want to be on the next News from the Heart show? Drop us a line via instant feedback at bmajor.org. News from the Heart is brought to you by Intuitive Soul and is produced by Major Radio for Clear Channel's iHeartRadio and bmajor.org. 